what do you think of that? On the 25th of March 2013, I left snowy Essex and flew to Orlando, arriving at 2 a.m., hired a car at 4 a.m., and drove the 600 miles to Hampstead, arriving that evening, a long day. I had booked a flight for my wife to join me in Miami on the 10th of May, so needed to sail the 700 miles south to meet her. After two weeks fitting out at the boatyard Hampstead, with a lot of help from Gerald and Pam Foy, the yard owners, she was splashed on the 10th of April. Left Hampstead on the 10th of April 2013, and motored south into the 15 knot southerly breeze, slowing Sylvia G and her 16 horsepower engine to under three miles an hour, bucking the tide to Carolina Beach Inlet, then over six mile an hour the other side. We launched on uh, the first day from uh, Hampstead at uh, just after 10 this morning and uh, arrived here at half past five. Well, actually, it was just after five, but the, um, the first time I anchored, it dragged. So I had to pull it up again and uh, chuck it out again. But we've been plugging into this uh, southerly breeze all day, and it's been quite a battle. We've got more of it tomorrow, so better get used to it. It's a nice little place this, quite snug, there's 20 foot of water out there. Left Carolina Beach before dawn and shot and, uh, down Snow's Cut at over nine knots the into the Cape Fear River where the flood tide slowed us to under four knots. Under four knots going down the Cape Fear River on the uh, flood, last of the flood. Thunderstorms due this afternoon. It's raining over there already. 60% um, chance of rain, the forecast was. So that looks like the 60% over there. Approached Lockwood's Folly Inlet, making seven knots with the half ebb, and found just six feet of water in places then slowed to five knots the other side, where we passed a chap aground with Towboat US in attendance and a long wait for high water. Then through Shalott Inlet with eight foot an hour before low water. Under the Manangore high level bridge that has replaced the pontoon bridge. Interesting foundations on three piers. Very few places to anchor in shelter today, so pleased to get to the North-South Carolina border and squeezed over the sandbar into Calabash Creek off the Little River to anchor in 10 feet. Wind strengthening as forecast to southwest 20 knots plus. A disturbed night culminating in the mother of all thunderstorms at 5.30 a.m. I heard my wife call Roger as clear as day and went out into the storm to check that all was well. She is in the UK. Stayed at anchor the next day and night as a weather front blew over with 30 knot gusts. and watch the casino cruise boat creep out of the Little River Inlet to head beyond the three mile limit. Left at dawn and ran aground on the bar for half an hour into the notorious rock pile where the canal was blasted from rock for two miles. Submerged ledges make the channel narrow. I was in 13 feet of water and suddenly wham I hit the rocks at the bottom bounced over three or four rocks and then eventually got clear. I've checked the uh, bilge and that seems to be clear but bloody hell it didn't half take a bash. I was doing six knots at the time 
and we've just bounced over these rocky outcrops but it's hellish a problem. Lots of golf courses at Myrtle Beach and this one has the course one side of the ICW and a chair lift to the car park on the other bank. Don't let your balls drop. Coming up to what they call the combination bridges. There's a, a railway bascule bridge in blue uh, already up until the train comes along and then a couple of more bridges. It's got to hang a bit of a left here. That's better. And um, we're doing quite well. We're doing uh, 6.8 knots over the ground. Into the beautiful deep Whackamore River past lovely houses, then wooded shores dressed in their spring green. Really beautiful. I've yet to see another boat going south. Maybe it's telling me something. All the other boats, pleasure boats, are going north. Hmm. I wonder. Keep a lookout for deadheads, as floating tree trunks are called. In the water there. Just caught in on the bank. Old tree fallen in. You hit one of those at six knots, you know all about it. Beautiful. Fine till I was attacked by no seam midges and deer flies. But I'm being attacked by bloody great horse flies. Look at the size of them. Absolutely bloody great things. And um, I had socks on but they started to eat my toes. So I've had to put my shoes back on. They're quite voracious and um, it's quite tricky navigating as you can see from the chart it's quite twisty i forgot my sun hat so improvised with the tea towel okay so long as nobody could see me plenty of peaceful deep water anchorages available in bull creek and prince creek but i pressed on for 20 miles to georgetown up the Sandpit River to anchor under the noisy mill in the only space I could find. Pretty little town, but not much water. Left after dawn in a flat calm, as soon as I could see a couple of hundred yards through the fog, and crept over the bar in seven feet of water as Georgetown slept this Sunday morning followed the ICW cutting across the North and South Santee rivers. That's what these day marks are put there for. Midges very bad, so donned the dishcloth again. Travelled throughout beautiful marshy land all day. Squeezed over the skinny shoals by bullyard sound, requiring intense concentration to stay in the dredge channel. Wild place, rather lovely. Quite a long way from nowhere. We're doing very well. We've got uh, six and a half knots, so we're taking the ebb and uh, plenty of water at the moment. Pulled into the excellent Isle of Palms Marina for the night for supplies, fuel, laundrette, and a welcome shower. Met some lovely people in the restaurant who invited me to join them. Left Isle of Palms Marina before 8 to make the first opening of the Ben Sawyer Swing Bridge at 9. Boarded by the Coast Guard and a lady immigration officer at 8.30 for an inspection. Very efficient, polite and friendly. Hopefully all clear sir? All clear. All clear, excellent. Thank you very much indeed for all the information and help you've given me. We're just waiting for the uh, swing bridge now 
for 0900 hours and then hopefully that will open. Don oilies as a lazy rain came down crossing it's Charlestown Harbour. I was boarded by the Coast Guard earlier and uh, just now the law enforcement agency came up alongside and asked if I was, had been boarded um, today to which I replied and then they said thank you captain and off they went downtown Charleston nice looking place all the lichen growing on the trees there good morning old Abby is going away waiting for the bascule bridge to open oh here's a big old fella he could squeeze under it's 30 foot high and we're 42 feet so uh, we have to wait some lovely houses here at Charleston sailing boat sunk poor thing roll the furling gear this is the Wadmalaw River uh, very deep, 30 feet or more, almost in the middle of nowhere, quite a big shipyard. Um, looked like a grey sort of frigate type landing craft ship, so I didn't want to start taking photographs in case I got arrested. That's what comes from taking photographs and video. Damn nearly ran aground on the island there. Uh, it's all underwater couldn't see it but I suddenly looked check the chart I was heading straight for it you really got to concentrate concentrate Walker this is a uh, fennec cut between one river and the next you can see from here what the cuts like you can see my track as I turned in so the current caught me the hell's own job to correct it. Anyway, we're, we're through, but it's uh, quite tricky on the ebb. Don't want to get stuck on the mud. We've made really good progress. We've just managed to catch the, the floods and the ebbs up and down the rivers just right, and we've only been bucking the tide on a few occasions like now. Um, but just up here we hang a left into another cut which goes into another river, which we go down, and then turn right through another cut into another river and go up. White knuckle ride through the Ashipoo Kusaw cutoff at over eight knots and a falling tide. As the forecast was for only northeast five knots overnight, I decided to press on till sunset and anchor in the wide but shallow expanse of the Kusaw River. Absolute peace. Up to a lovely, calm, sunny dawn. Through the cut and into the beautiful Beaufort River. Just come through the uh, the swing bridge that only opens, starts to open at nine. Past pretty Beaufort and the hospital with its own jetty for waterborne patients. Good idea. Lovely day. Lovely river, Beaufort River, beautiful houses, plenty of water, nice part of the world. Crossed over Port Royal Sound and felt the swell of the Atlantic. Later a southeasterly breeze let me set the Genoa for long stretches as we motor sailed into the flood. Well, there's a bit of swell here and the reason for that is we've had a southeast wind which had a lovely fetch down and that is the North Atlantic Ocean out there between that head there and between that head there. It's been a beautiful day, had a cracking fetch down the river even had to reef the Genoa at one point um, but the winds died off again now this is Calibogue Sound 
and that's the second time I've seen the Atlantic uh, this morning. Coming up to the Savannah River, we're in Field Cut, this is called. We're in 18 foot of water, <laughs> pretty close to the bank. Uh, a bit unnerving as it's a falling tide yet again. It's uh, half past four, quarter to five, so another couple of hours and uh, ten miles or so I shall be looking for somewhere to sling the hook. But it's good to be in Georgia. Waiting for 5.30 for the Causton Bluff uh, Baskill Bridge to open. Just been here about, um, got here about five, so just slung the hook for half an hour. Check the weather forecast, northeast 10 tonight, so that shouldn't be too bad. It, it seemed to be getting shallower as I was going down, so um, I just pulled off the the main ICW and um, slung the hook in this tributary here but I'm only in six foot of water as it is. Here we are in Georgia, not far from Savannah. It's uh, now half past seven. Still pretty murky. At least the sun is trying to make an appearance. Still pretty boggy. Putting some diesel in siphoning it in. Bob horn handy. Radar fired up. Nothing moving. GPS map working well. But it gets very skinny further on. Six foot at low water. So I'm just cruising down to get there just after low water so it's on the make. So if we do touch then uh, we just have to wait a little bit and then we can come off again. One minute you're driving along in thick fog, visibility a few hundred yards maybe, and then all of a sudden, wham! You can see for miles. That's Hellgate over there, that's where we've got to go through next. That was Hellgate, as it's called. Got down to six foot six. Uh, thankfully, the fog had lifted, so I could really see the floating channel marks because they moved the red and the green floating marks according to where the channel erodes to. Had a lovely sail down St Catherine Sound. Uh, come for over there. Now the fog's gone. It's turned into a really beautiful day. A few mare's tails up there. There's a front coming through Friday. Yeah, it looks as though there's some wind coming. But nice puffy clouds there today. Crossed Doughboy Sound, then tucked behind Commodore Island and anchored in Back River in plenty of water. Forecast east 15 knots, increasing southeast 20 knots tomorrow night, going northwest 20 to 30 knots with thunderstorms as a front blew over. So I need to find somewhere safe to anchor tomorrow. Uh, Poured with rain as we set off the next day Pouring with rain. and ran aground in mid-river, wriggled through with six inches to spare crossed lots of sounds today. Alt Maha, Buttermilk, St Simons, Jekyll and St Andrew's Sound where we had a long slog into wind and tide almost at the Atlantic to round a shoal. We had a lovely sail into beautiful Cumberland River. The pilot book said look for wild horses on Cumberland Island and blow me down but there were two or three on the beach in the distance turned into Delaroche Creek to anchor between reed beds in plenty of water. Woke to a strong southerly, but by, by 9 a.m. the wind had eased, so I thought I might try to get across Cumberland Sound before the front came through. 
Got into the sound and the wind freshened on the nose and our speed dropped to two knots. At that speed it was five hours of slog before we could get to shelter, so decided to turn back and anchored at noon in Brickhill River with a bit more shelter from trees. Strong winds, rain and thunderstorm that afternoon, then a calm night. Saturday morning, the wind's gone round. Next morning the wind had gone to the north and strengthened as forecast and tipping with rain. Decided to see if the front had passed over by noon as with a north wind we should get down and across the sound in no time. By 11 a.m. the wind had eased and the sky lightened, but it was still raining. Stuck my head out and hell's teeth, we're nearly up the bank. The anchor had dragged. The trusty beta diesel started first time and got us into mid-river. Set the autopilot and slow ahead and hauled in the anchor to find the chain wrap round the flukes and shank. Sylvia G had been spinning round in the gust and that had caused the muddle. A nice sail down the Cumberland Sound, keeping to port of the channel and away from Trident submarines up Kings Bay Inlet. Up the Amelia River and past Fernandina Beach Industry and into Florida at last. Across Nassau Sound and into Sawpick Creek where we met a large passenger ship near Fort George River. Anchored in Sisters Creek, just short of the road bridge and the St John's River. It blew half a gale that night. Drove past five miles of luxury houses in Palm Valley this Sunday afternoon and saw just two people in their gardens. This guy's dock is bigger than the house almost. Bit of dirty weather coming up. Uh, St Augustine ahead and um, if that doesn't come towards us, then uh, we've got a great pile of stuff coming up behind. So knowing our luck, we'll get caught in the middle, I expect. Got all my oilies on, and my white boots on, and all raring to go. So we'll get there. Going into a marina tonight. Um, first one since uh, Isle of Palms, so uh, they've got uh, washing machines and, and uh, showers and uh, it's quite cheap, uh, a dollar a foot, so thirty dollars a night. So that's where we're off to tonight, hopefully, unless something happens, but uh, that's the plan. Very pleased to get into Marineland Marina as a storm built. Stayed at Marineland for three nights, along with many others, waiting for a weather window. So, yep, pleased to be here. It's my good friend Neil, on whose beautiful boat I'm standing, and uh, who kindly took me shopping this morning. Good friend the Karen. beach across the road was a welter of foam from the North Atlantic Ocean. And this is Marineland. went to see the dolphins and amazed to wish one of them a happy 60th birthday, nearly as old as me. Left Marineland Marina on the 24th of April in beautiful weather and making seven and a half knots as we carried the ebb to Ponce de Leon Inlet. Several bridges to open and they were brilliant. I'd request an opening on VHF Channel 9 and they would reply, We have you visual, Captain. Just keep coming. And they timed it perfectly. Anchored fore and aft in Rockhouse Creek in eight feet, looking over sandbars at the inlet. Next day the anchors came up clean at 7.15 and we crept over the shoals at the inlet just before dawn. Into the vast, shallow Mosquito Lagoon and occasionally slowed to avoid mating manatees, teeming with fish over the grassy bottom, a birthplace of early man. Turned into the haul over cut and was faced with a huge barge going north 
I backed out and waited till it came out. It was a huge shuttle fuel tank on a pontoon with a puller and pusher tug fore and aft. It was a full-size replica on its way north to a museum and I heard the next day that it got stuck under a bridge and caused big delays for yachts. Into the Indian River, vast and shallow again, motoring in a ten-foot channel past fishermen standing up to their knees a few yards away. Into Titusville Municipal Marina and their complimentary shuttle bus took me to Walmart later and to the Kennedy Space Center. The bus was a kneeling bus. Interesting. Great place to visit. The wind was on the beam the next morning but too shallow to set sail. Later it came on the nose again southeast 15 to 20 knots and some rain. Lots of people enjoying the desert islands this Saturday afternoon. Made from the canal dredging spoil they have turned into wildlife sanctuaries. Anchored by Webasso Bridge at dusk in 12 foot. 65 miles made good today. Had to motor out the anchor at dawn next morning. Sunny and warm with an easterly breeze. Past a power station feeding very slender reinforced concrete pylons crossing the ICW. Most unusual. Into the busy crossroads at St Lucy River Inlet with Saturday afternoon boaters whizzing home as we wriggled through the shallows. Here the ICW splits and goes south to Miami or west to the Gulf of Mexico. Next morning I ran aground briefly then motored through Hobie Sound at noon and slogged into a stiff breeze down Lake Worth to Lake Worth Inlet at low water. This is a Class A all-weather inlet and close to the Bahamas and attracts mega yachts like Steve Jobs' 256-foot Venus by the radical architect Felipe Stark, which doesn't win my vote for beauty. Cayman Islands flag very common on super yachts. Anchored last night in Palm Beach as a thunderstorm built but fizzled out after a bit of rain. Mile marker shows 1,022 miles from mile zero at Norfolk, Virginia. Just 70 to go to Miami. Terrible forecast for the next few days with thunderstorms building each afternoon with 60 knot squalls. Took a short hop to Delray Beach the next day as a storm built, anchored in seven feet under tower blocks. Then a few miles the next morning to Fort Lauderdale, the center of yachting and anchored in Lake Sylvia along with a dozen other yachts. Some uh, pretty cool yachts here. Fort Lauderdale. That place is just stuffed full of gin palaces. Big thunderstorm that afternoon. A week before Patricia arrives and only 20 miles to Miami. The weather forecast still bad, so decided to spend a few days in Lake Sylvia, do some shopping, a few chores, visit friends and relax a bit. Next morning I had the gut feeling that we had dragged the anchor a bit. The zoomed in GPS showed a reasonably small squiggle, but I acted and hauled up the anchor to find the flukes in an old canvas hatch cover. All over the anchor, all around the flukes. Like this most of the night, Just as well I reset the anchor as that could afternoon inside, a massive thunderstorm an hit. I sat with the engine taking the strain off vicious gusts and watched two other yachts drag towards us. Luckily their anchors caught before reaching us. The 5 p.m. forecast said there had been 60 knot gusts, 7 inches of rain with another 2 inches to come, tornadoes and water spouts. Went to my friend's birthday party at the birth of the amazing cosmic muffin plane boat built from Howard Hughes's private Boeing B-307 airliner. The day before Patricia arrived, our 43rd wedding anniversary, I sailed down to Aventura, Miami and tied up in the Turnberry Isle Resort private marina. I thought the shock of living in a 40-year-old boat would be tempered by having a few days in a five-star luxury hotel first. Hired a car and picked Patricia up the next day 
and had a few tourist days at the Hotel Beach Club, a round of golf on one of the resort courses, shopping in the amazing Aventura Mall, Miami Oceanarium, into the Everglades for an airboat ride and a drive up to the Kennedy Space Center. Back to reality on board Sylvia G, then headed south a few miles to anchor in Mall Lake. Next day we sailed south across shallow Biscayne Bay and tried to anchor in Angelfish Creek but gave up and motored back into the bay. Wriggled through the creek the next morning with six inches to spare over a coral ledge and into the Hawk Channel separating the Florida Keys from the world's third largest reef. Picked up a free mooring off Indian Key then went ashore to explore a flourishing trading island living off ships wrecked on the reef. Then in 1840 the local Indians killed 13 residents and sacked it, never to recover its old glory. After a bouncy night we had a beam reach to a southeast ten knots warm breeze and made it to Marathon Marina on Vaca Key by mid-afternoon and made very welcome. Walked to the old Seven Mile Bridge and noted the handrails made from railway lines, originally laid by Henry Flagler from Miami to Key West. The track was ripped up after a 1935 hurricane wrecked it and became U.S. Overseas Highway No. 1. Stayed another day and visited the Turtle Hospital, complete with ambulances and operating theatre. This hundred-pound loggerhead was found close to death with a wound exposing her skull but she was nursed back to health over two months and then released into the Gulf. They are doing a splendid job returning turtles to the wild after boat strikes swallowing fish hooks and plastic and from tumours. Lovely sail to Key West with the course almost due west at the end. First time had been refused a berth, twice full up for the holiday weekend. Made a plan to check possible anchorages while hoping we would get a berth at A&B Marina in the middle of town. Luckily they had room for three nights. A very nice boardwalk uh, follows the, the bite, Key West bite. It's been a very nice marina and good marina for us. Did the tourist tour and loved Key West. The shuttle bus drivers are a guinea a minute and had us all laughing. Lovely temperature tempered by the trade winds. Lovely people. First time our electricity supply to Sylvia G was metered and we were charged 30 cents for three days. A sport fishing boat was bunkering with just under 3,000 gallons of diesel at $4.65 a gallon as I filled my two cans. Another world. Left Key West at 9am with most of the charter fleet and motored into a light northeasterly. A lot of sea grass floating and I scooped some up in a bucket and it was alive with life, tiny fish, shrimps and snails. Back into our same berth at Marathon Marina by 5.30 and renewed acquaintances. The weather forecast was worst next day with small craft advisory warning for the whole of next week. Strong easterlies, squally thunderstorms, water spouts and heavy rain. Monday was Memorial Day public holiday and the marina had arranged a barbecue but it was washed out with heavy rain all day. We spent one day at the Dolphin Research Centre on Grassy Key and was impressed with their pens sunk into the Gulf waters, more natural than the concrete tanks of marine land and the noise of Miami Oceanarium. The TV series Flipper was filmed there. At the end of the week the forecast was 15 knots on the nose but fewer thunderstorms. Decided to go on Friday the 31st of May and left Marathon at after 8 into an easterly 10 knots, course 95 degrees in 22 feet of water. 
4.7 miles an hour over the ground at 2,000 RPM. By 11 the wind had increased and we were down to under 3 knots, so sheeted half a jenny inside the shrouds and hauled the clue in with the weather sheet, bore away a bit and doubled our speed. By mid-afternoon the wind freed for us as it was being sucked into a huge thunderstorm over the Gulf Stream and we romped to Indian Quay in fine style to pick up the mooring again. Storms all around but missed us, so a peaceful night. Away at crack of dawn into a light easterly and made good progress till the wind and seas increased early afternoon. I didn't like the idea of going over a coral shelf into Angelfish Creek again with deeper troughs, so pressed on to go through the Biscayne Channel thunderstorms building all around at 6.30 and pleased to get into the calm waters of the channel after a lumpy ride outside. Anchored off Hurricane Harbour at 7pm after sailing nearly 70 miles in just over 12 hours. The heavens opened and noisy craft left us in peace. Woke to the Miami skyline lost in clouds but the sun had burned through when we up-anchored at 11 to cross the four miles of Biscayne Bay to Coconut Grove and the Dinner Key Municipal Marina, which is half an hour from the airport. Two days later, Patricia caught her flight home and I sat and worked on an advert to sell Sylvia G on eBay. Tropical Storm Andrea, the first of the hurricane season, swept into Florida and dumped nearly 14 inches of rain on us today. Tornado warning for Miami and water spout warnings for Biscayne Bay. 50 knot winds and a two foot storm surge didn't bother us in our snug marina. Fort Lauderdale is the yachting capital so decided to sell Sylvia G there and chose the municipal site at Cooley's Landing up the New River to meet prospective buyers. Left after eight expensive days stormbound in Coconut Grove and headed into Biscayne Bay. I heard a shout behind me, watch this! And a two-seater jet ski zoomed towards us and did a sharp turn sending a wall of water over us. Washed my hat overboard and many gallons went through the hatch and soaked my pilot books in the cabin. <laughs> North through Miami and anchored in Mall Lake again as thunderstorms crashed over us again. I spent a few hot and stormy days at Cooley's Landing, the site of the original settlement before the fort was built. Absolutely chucking it down. Here comes the Jungle Queen. Coming past. Myself a visitor. Iguana. What are you doing on my boat? Andiamo! I sold Sylvia G for nearly what I paid for her the previous year and flew back to the UK the next day. The end of my American adventure. Thank you America. A wonderful experience.